Yu-Gi-Oh! is not just a game, it can be a whole experience. Taking a new deck you've never played before, building it from the ground up and making it your own to eventually compete in tournaments at the highest level is just so satisfying to me. To truly get the full, authentic Yu-Gi-Oh! experience though, we're doing things the old-fashioned way. Our cards can only be obtained from inside a pack or by trading with fellow duelists. This time, we become the king of synchros. Welcome to Playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Properly Season 2. Aye. Subscribe. I never thought I'd be saying this by episode 4, but fellas, we have a regional to prepare for. We're gunning for the shortest series ever, let's go. Originally, I was just gonna play Branded because I thought our synchros wouldn't be playable enough by then, but I believe in our deck, man. We can do it. The tournament, I believe, is towards the end of the month, giving us about three or four more episodes to get our shit together. I've mentioned a few times already that I want to find an engine we can blend with our deck to help solve some of its weaknesses, but doing so right now would put us in unfamiliar territory and make things a bit harder to play competently at the regional. So the game plan at the moment is to focus on the current format and to adapt our deck to be the strongest it can be against the meta. I've got quite a few cards in mind that I want to pick up like Pot of Prosperity and Forbidden Droplet and the timing couldn't be any better because they get reprinted in the rarity collection and therefore shouldn't be too hard for us to trade into. That being said, we have 30 pounderoos to spend, so let's pull some more bangers. Aye, but wait, you see this thumb? Get a click. Another opening with shitty audio. Let's go, baby. Another two megatins that we're cracking into in preparation for the rarity collection. We're not going to trade away anything we pull today. I think we are just going to stick with sort of becoming more familiar with our list and playing our combos in a real environment through interruption. So any good pulls today are going straight towards prosperities and droplets and whatever else from the rarity collection. Oh, we could pick up a... Uh, the Biru is kind of iffy in this deck still. If we pair it with Droplet, it might be fine. We'll see. We'll see. So in the last two tins we opened, we got the Rainbow Dragon and the Stardust Dragon, which are very nice pools for the quarter century promo slot. Let's see if we can match that. I mean, Dark Magician is the next best one, right? So if we can pull that, we're in for a good time. Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Okay, I think that's like three, four pound, maybe, yeah. So a nice bit of value there. And secondly, we have... One Dark Magician, baby. Oh, we got our first dud promo. Salmon Great Blaze Dragon. It's still very, very shiny. Somewhat miscut a little bit there as well, actually. But uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Most likely just going to be sitting in our binder for the longest of times. But we take it regardless. So, six additional packs of the 2023 Megaton to open here. Let's get into it. There is no way we pull another fan rear. But Druis Worm, Druis Worm maybe. Let's get into it. We will take all the value we can get. Uh, I mean, even if we pull a Druus Worm, we could play it in the side deck today. Uh, let's see, let's see. So we have Reversion, Melfi Wally, let's go. Scareclaw Acro, Ichiroku's Ledger Book. We got a uh, Luster Dragon in the Wanted section. Mary Melfi's Ice State Erosion. All right, here we go, Supers. Oh, we can get a uh, Ultra Zalamander Catalyzer. That would be a nice rarity bump as well. So Smoke Mosquito Super Rare into Dynamorphia, Stealth Bergia, and a Kashtira Preparations into two secrets in these Mega Tin Packs. I always forget. We have a Vision with Eyes of Blue. Okay, I think that's garbage. And a Starving Venom, Preda Power Fusion Dragon. I think this is just uh, bulk as well, but very, very shiny. Let's go. And then, of course, we have Exosister Asophil and a bunch of other commons. A lot of traps in that pack. That seems to be a very common thing. For me to say these days which is kind of funny but uh, uh let's go melfi penny second pack scareclaw astra propagandic libromancer bonded we have ice jade creation ajiro cassis and dark contract with patent license into the hollows dynamorphia cantrogena oh we're pulling like a bunch more dynamorphia cards after trading all of our dynamorphia cards away kind of funny uh, ultra rares we have camelot realm of noble knights and noble arms this is actually exclusive to the tins so this might have like a couple of pound value to it. I don't know if it's any good though. Uh, I don't think it is actually. And then we have Over Fusion. We've got Cheeked Up Neos here. Very, very cool. Secret Rares, Spell, Fluanderies, and the Advent of Adventure. That might be, might be worth something. Uh, maybe, maybe, I don't know. And the Zombie Vampire. This is seeing play in uh, Horus Tournaments 
and basically just every Horus deck. So while this was initially bulk, it might actually be worth something now, which is kind of nice. It's, it's relevant right now, so it's like in demand, which is good if you're trying to trade it off. Uh, Sunlit Sentinel, Branded Expand, Band, let's go. Uh, Baku, Kustanen, and yep, Fair Welcome Labyrinth. Oh, we should be on the lookout for Labyrinth Commons as well. Well, I say just Labyrinth cards in general. We need the Stovey Torbies, the Arianas, Lady. Let's see, Livermancer first appearance. We got Amphibious Bugroth, Grand Tusk Dragon. Nice card. Dynamorphia Sonic. We have Livermancer Fireburst, Light Law Medium, and another Dynamorphia Hollow, Dynamorphia Frenzy. Let's go. Ultra Rares, Alba Linatus, the Abyss Dragon. Very, very cool. This would screw us over, man. Just set Albas into our deck, man, that would suck. Uh, second ultra is Groza, Tyrant of Thunder. Secret rares are, can we get anything nice? Exo Sister, Sophia, and Blue Eyes, Tyrant Dragon. This was a very expensive ultra rare. Well, I say very expensive. It was like 10, 15, 20 pounds. Uh, I don't know if this is worth anything. It might be considering Jet Dragon was also six pounds. So that may be a nice pool. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, it'll pop up on the screen, obviously. We've got Dogmatica. Uh, oh, Draco back. If we want to play an adventure package, we got another, oh, we got Chandra Glear. Okay, okay, a Labyrinth card. Don't know if we're going to play it. If we play a massive engine or a small engine, or if we play the engine at all, who knows? That all still needs to be experimented with. All right, second tin. Pack number four, we have Light Law Medium. Haunted Zombies. Yo, we got the Bufo. Bufo D's nuts, baby. Ice Jade, Sinote, Enion Cradle, Scarecrow, Glash, Fire Burst, and the Hollows. We have a Shark, Drake, Vice. Come on, Catalyzer, please. Therion, Reaper, Foom, and a Amazonis, Augusta. Secret Rares. Come on, I swear we pulled a Fenrir in the last pack that we opened this. We have a Synchro, a Psychic, and Punisher. Ah, another Red Eyes Zombie Dragon Lord. We did trade the first one away, but uh, it's just, it's it's back. <laughs> it's back, like the zombie is, it's back. Uh, and we have, oh, let's go. The Bestial Lubellion, very, very nice pull here. One of the more expensive cards in this set. Don't know if we want to trade this off or keep it. We still need to decide on a secondary engine. So if we do go for Bestials, then we kind of need this. Um, so maybe keep this at the back of the binder, so not exactly trade bait, which is, I don't know how to feel about that. Uh, reverse jar, we have dispelling. Uh, setup isn't really that good. Uh, yeah, nothing else too important there. This tin already is way better than the last one. Lubalian, very nice. Can we get anything else? We have quartz, realized, alert, doom broker, Ika, and a Melfi Wally, let's go. Uh, Naturia, Camellia, super rare. I didn't even realize this was a super in the set. It looks kind of nice, actually. Uh, we have a Naturia Blessing to go alongside our Camellia. Look at this, bro. And a Magikor Warrior of the Relics. Level 4, 2300. Crazy. All right, Secret Rares. What do we have? A Fusion Dynamorphia Rexter. And we're just pulling the Dynamorphia Core here in all the hollow slots. And a... Dude, what's going on? <laughs> we're getting them all. Dynamorphia Teresia. Literally every Dynamorphia card, we're pulling them. Uh, Domatica Turgy, and ooh, we got another Leonidas, Rika Konkon. Yes, Stovey Torby, baby. Let's go. All right, final pack of the 2023 Mega Tins. This is probably going to be the last ones that we open in this series. So let's see if we can send it off with a banger. We have Alasia, Mary Melfi, Scareclaw Straddle, Astra, Therion Cross, uh, Ice Jade Creation. All right, we got a Smile Potion. Drink this. You're going to be smiling forever. Ultra Rares, Rika. Princess. Okay, is this the negate or is this the free special summon? You no, know what we're talking about. It's both. <laughs> Card's broke. Card's crazy. Uh, second ultra rare, we have a Patisiel Kuvatun. Fusion Pendulum. All right, secret rares. Come on, baby. Anything juicy. We have a Pendulum Dynamite Power Load, the Draco Slayer. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, so this card right here needs to be a banger. Anything else here? Uh, a bunch of traps and our Leonidas, nothing. Okay, here we go. Ending the opening with some mad trade bait. We have Therion this Coliseum. Okay, can't win them all. Can't win them all. Uh, even with the promos, I guess we kind of sucked on, but uh, we got Lebellion. Do we trade this or do we keep it? 
I don't know. I guess we'll find out in the future. So we're currently looking at the pre-sales. We're still in the pre-sales stage of uh, Prosperities. And last night they were like £15 plus. And I was like, dude, this is crazy. There's no way these hold. Uh, currently looking at £11.90 on a super rare. And this should continue to go down further. So Prosperities under £10 is going to be ideal. And uh, that's not actually going to be too problematic for us to trade into, considering our binder currently is about £20, I believe. Uh, or, you know, 20 to 30 A lot of junk, though. And then droplets are sitting at £4 each. However, when I checked last night, Baron was still £20 a copy, even at super rares. We're now at 14 Okay, and that's going to continue to go down as the set comes out as well. Okay, okay, nice. I, I was a bit worried for a second, but we're going down, we're going down. That's fine. All right, let's have a look at the binder. Alright, so this is what our trade binder is looking like now. It looks not bad when we're at the front of the page. You know, we got the Lubellion. I have decided that we're prioritizing the regional over other engines. So I have put the Ariana at the front as trade bait as well. Uh, better luck next time. It's like five, six, seven pound. And then all of our quarter century shiny boys at the bottom there. And then it kind of falls off a little bit. We have all the prismatic secret rares. Zombie Vampire Michaelis. A couple of pound here and there. But it very quickly drops off as we get into sort of the ultras and the supers of the set and then that's it that's all we've got so we can maybe currently get like one or two prosperity or like a play set of droplet but we'll see we'll see we still have a few episodes until the regional so i'm not too worried just yet we're not going to change our deck too much either just now but i will quickly show you the list while we're at it we are just playing the exact same list as the previous episode however we have cut it down from 41 to 40 by getting rid of one of the resonator commands because it was the most cuttable card at the moment definitely a huge change of pace compared to all the progress we've had in the previous episodes but sometimes you gotta slow down and prepare for the future so i suppose we can take a moment to speak about all the sort of different things i'm considering for our deck right now obviously with our deck being locked to dark Dark Dragon Synchro Monsters, we're limited in the kind of variety of interruptions that we can put up through our extra deck. Some of the more playable ones are Void Ogre Dragon, which negates a spell or trap if we have no cards in our hand, but currently with the way we're playing the deck, we always kind of have cards in our hand, so whether that's going to be live or not is kind of not reliable. Buster Dragon can just blanket make all our opponent's monsters dragon type, but that's not too impactful against a lot of different decks, so it's probably a side option. And then Borrowload Savage Dragon, which of course needs a link monster in the graveyard to equip to it to actually be able to make use of its effect. Naturally we just can't do that which brings me to one of the tech options I am considering and that is Ultimate Slayer. With the rise of SP Little Knight being one of the strongest cards in the game right now and Unchained being one of the top decks as well, link monsters are kind of back meaning Ultimate Slayer is a pretty valid option when it comes to breaking boards and if we can dump a Bucephalus which is a link 5 to remove like an SP Little Knight not only are we breaking boards, but we're also making Borrowload Savage live later during the duel as well. On top of that, Bucephalus, when sent to the graveyard, can dump a Garura to draw a card, therefore Ultimate Slayer is replacing itself as well, and that is a lot of value out of one card. Another thing I'm potentially looking at is Small World instead of Prosperity. I've very much been enjoying Wandering King Wildwind recently, when you pair that with Crimson Resonator, you're not even using your normal summon to threaten some decent plays and force some interaction. Then you can just go ahead and normal summon soul and go into the bone archfiend combo anyway. The problem with that is that we only play one wild wind and I wouldn't really want to bump that number up because on its own wild wind isn't really achieving much which is where small world comes in. Not only can it bridge our entire deck together and find us a combo piece that we need but also it reduces our hand size because it essentially goes neg one which makes void ogre dragon that much more playable. And then finally the last kind of thing I'm considering is getting a blowout floodgate for going first in our side deck. Our deck's actually not terrible at putting up something like Abyss through Interruption, however Abyss on its own in these kind of situations is just not enough. So a non-engine card that's essentially enough to secure the game by itself going first is sort of what we should be looking at and blowouts like Summon Limit and Skill Drain are kind of our best options that we can send off the field for Bone Archfiend on turn 3 to go for the kill. Like I said, these are all just considerations moving forward. I don't actually have a full-on set in stone list that I'm working towards. We'll just have to see where the future takes us. Let me know what your thoughts are down below if you do have experience with the deck. And uh, let's go to Locals.
today's locals is our first since the release of Age of Overlord, and so I thought it would be fitting to have a feature match against one of the most popular decks right now, and that is Sinful Spoils Rescue Ace. We got Grant on the other side of the table who wins a dice roll and is going first, so with that being said, it's time to duel. Sure, play straight into the draw, let's go. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> good. I'm good. Here's something. That's sick. Yeah, that's insane. Drop a turn? Yeah, on you go. Stab him in. Yes. I'll act the Crimson Guy. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yes. Oh, my nose are crap, boys. Oh, oh it's crap as mine over the PR. You didn't even hurt me. What are you talking about? Normal Soul effect at level 4 lower fiends. It's no problem. No, yes. I know where this deck has a chokehold. <laughs> oh, everywhere. Everywhere? I said what I need for a problem, and I will pass my turn, Gamer. Go for turn. Draw star. Yeah, unfortunately. Standby. Yeah. In the standby. Is that QC? Yeah. Expensive QC, yeah. Nope. Nope. Oh, Turbulent. Yeah, okay. Same as the I see, I see you. You see, you see. Nice turbulence. Oh. Preventer. Unfortunately. Well, I say unfortunately. Time to go battle phase. Yeah. Fenrir into soul, Fenrir effect, and punish face down. Yeah. And then 2 4, 2 5, 2 8. Oh, I'll take that. I'll take that. Uh, that was so not okay. Sure. Ooh, you're 300. Yeah, 300 left. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to pass back to you on that one. Over the uh, I will draw. Stand by me. Yes. Pet. Yes. That vision. Where's Nerf Hall? Yes. Someone do it there. Oh, yeah. Effect is special. Pass this one to someone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now you're a point. I will activate the effect. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, safer to fail. So, um, sort of like a Normal summon. Crimson, yep. Yeah. 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 So, no way out. Oh, that's good. Yes, that's good. Yes, that's good. Yes, that's good. Yes, May I? Special. Yeah, 
Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. it just happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yo! We hope we don't have. And if you have one attack, four one defense. How should all one defense be? Uh, on res, we go chain one division, chain two, second, and then we are going to. Activate guy, careful effects. Bro, what? <laughs> Why do you say that? Oh my god. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I'm gonna end my turn. I can occasionally half play through a hand trap. Yeah. I mean, two, not, not so much. It would have been three if you didn't get that. Oh, the Emperor as well, yeah. Beam. Over to you. Throw off a team. Yep. Which does. Target. What's their special piece? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and change the crowd. I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> Unfortunately, back to you. Let's go. Draw something. Whoever Stop my man. Yes. There's a guy. Yes. Red zone. Some resolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck you. You absolute nonce. I'll activate boner. Send for cost. Right. Stop myself. Yes. Back target itself. Yep. Yeah. 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 Increase its level by one. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Special summon. Yes. So I control level 5 or higher dark. Two plus five. As a five, I would like to go for it. Stop the attack. Yes. Battle. Five one plus two five. So seven six. Set two. Press one. Draw your last pathetic card, Meta Sheep. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Back to you, good man. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's no, you don't have half of this. Yep, a very quick 2-0 in our favor. His hands weren't incredible. There was definitely a lot of hand traps in there and not enough engine. Although, I don't know what to make of game one. We did have Called by the Grave set for the Preventer anyway. And I'm assuming he just forgot the Diabell Star effect on fields. But it is only week one of Age of Overlord, so we'll take it. And that was round three of today's locals. Round one, we played against Kelby's Bestial Sprite Synchro deck. And we played into a Bestial each game. However, we were still able to end on Abyss, but his hands were just full gas both games and we just couldn't push through it. Yeah, we got absolutely demolished by that one. Round two, we played against Ethan's Nouvelle's Ritual deck and we won the dice roll, went first, opened full combo plus hand traps, so instant win there essentially. And then game two, we opened double imperm, ash, called by, and top deck as starter as well to go alongside our Crimson Resonator. That was pretty much enough to stop him and then we OTK'd him on our turn, so a quick 2-0 for round two as well. Round four, we played against Horus Volcanics and not gonna lie, I do not know Volcanics Volcanic cards. We kept getting drolled as well on top of everything, so uh, yeah, we lost that one. Giving us a 2 2 finish, resulting in 9th or I believe 10th place. Well, 2 2, so 10th place finish, and therefore just a measly OTS pack. But you know what that means? Ultimate Rare Thrust, gonna allow us to get everything we need from the Rarity Collection. I think this is also the last week before we get the next OTS pack, so. If we can pull a thrust before it rotates out, it'll be a good time. So, we have for our prize pack here, Sync Realm. Oh, <laughs> we could actually burn people with this because we do Synchro a lot. Uh, we also have a Evil Force and our Super Rare is, and it's not an Ultimate Rare, as you can tell from the border, Unchained Abomination. Numero dos. We have two of these now, man. We're getting duplicates on all of our OTS supers. Well, straight in the binder, I guess. And then next time, it's Rarity Collection, baby. Let's go. Let's go.